Okay, uh, let's continue. Uh, our next speaker uh, is uh, uh, Professor Yevdat Ilyasov uh, from uh, Institute of Mathematics in Ufa. Please. Uh, first of all, I would like to say thank you very much for your invitation for so great events uh, for the so great person as uh, La um, And the conference is organized, it's perfect in my opinion. One of the best the conference that I uh, One of the best the conference that I visited. So let me start. Uh, the, the title of my talk is uh, Nonlinear Generalization Caution Method. Relay caution methods and its applications. Uh, let's consider the standard definition of the relay caution. Here is A is linear operator. H may be finite dimensional spaces as usual. We begin to study this uh, concept. Even in the finite dimensional cases, uh, my talk will. Uh, deal because some open problem there is this. So we know that relay quotient is occupies a fundamental position in mathematics. For instance, the relay quotient is used in the minimal theorem to find exact value of the eigenvalue. Of course, for under some condition for the, all these uh, elements. Moreover, relay quotient uh, used in uh, in eigenvalue algorithms such as relay quotient iteration to obtain an eigenvalue approximation from the eigenvector approximation. In quantum mechanics, uh, the relay quotient gives the expression value of the observable corresponding to the operator H. The recent uh, investigations show that the set, set of learning algorithms in machine learning can be formulated as a unified mathematical model in terms of relay quotient. And so on, a lot of application we know. The purpose of my talk is to discuss the following question. Is it possible to introduce a useful generalization of the relation to the nonlinear topic? So let's me addition add some words. Using relation uh, looks like just a trick. The matter of this concept is not fully understood. Indeed, consider the system of equation. I assume that we first time to see this equation and try to solve it. Then it is not clear why it makes sense to multiply each of these equations by x, uh, e, i, then sum and divide, and the resulting to get the, this functional, which critical value lambda j and the corresponding critical points will give solution of this system. So my goal is to shed some light on this question. Uh, one of my thoughts uh, is, is the following. Uh, I give a uh, definition, as I understand now. Then I give uh, uh, some example where really this uh, new definition is work. Uh, uh, two examples, if I will have time, of course. Enough time. So <clears throat> let's start with the abstract setting. Consider the functional. Here is uh, functional is uh, good defined. It could be say lambda is, is some parameter. So this is, uh, we can suppose that this is not linear now functional. We are interested in, in the study of this equation, where D denotes uh, the fresh differential. And if we study this equation, actually we can introduce several useful relay quotient. For instance, relay quotient of the level set, uh, Nihari manifold relay quotient, Pakhazayev manifold relay quotient, and so on. But all of them can be introduced in unified approach as following. Assume this G is not equal to zero. It's actually, this is for simplicity, is, uh, I, I suppose, here. So for any given set, C, the functional, this, 
is said to be relaxation of the level set. So level set is defined as following. See, you remember this is uh, this is uh, uh, difference of these two functions. So note that if this quotient equal lambda for some lambda, then the calculation of this uh, derivative show. You see, I, I put here the calculation. Here we obtain this again. So this is equal lambda because here, and we get this. And what is the main conclusion from this? So if this functional derivative of this functional is equal with zero, and we and this value, so this is critical value, and the value is uh, critical value is lambda, and u is critical points of this function, then this is satisfied. So we get the solution of our problem and you belong to the level set. So, so we can conclude that any critical points of relay quotient function, this relay quotient function, will the value correspond to a critical points of our function that we study on the level set that belong to the level set C. Let me some, recall some standard definition from the theory of singularity. And because usually when we study, begin to study the, the geometry, we, 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 we met this definition. So let's uh, W be Banach space. Consider pressure differentiable parameterized, oh, not parameterized, sorry, this is mistake. Maps F. So that should be consider the set of level. This is called the set of level. This is a very important uh, concept in the, this uh, theory. So usually we study this, uh, usually the theory of singularity studies this set. So they, this set is said to be, the points is said to be a regular points of the functional F if this differential is subjective. And it is critical points or points of F otherwise. And uh, points C, this is said to be regular value of F if every point of the level set, so every point of this level set is regular and critical value otherwise. Correspondingly, we say that the level set is regular or critical. So regular set is uh, this set does not contain the singular points. So the, the main point is the following. Now we can see the parameterized maps. So this is a little bit different. This is a new novelty that we, uh, we consider. So let's we take into account what happens if the function depends from some parameter lambda. Let's uh, C be a given. State the question, for which value, for which value, the level set, sorry, this has to be lambda, uh, uh, is regular or critical. So we have to study with respect, uh, with, with respect to the lambda. So this is new question, even in the critical uh, theory or theory of singularities. The answer can be found due to, to the due to the relay quotient. Relay quotient of this function is lambda independent. You see, we now get the function which is independent from parameter. Which critical value corresponds to the critical level set? So if you want to find the critical level set of this, sorry, this has to be every time lambda. We have to simply study the, the relay quotient. This is idea what is, uh, what we means by the relay quotient. Let's, uh, let's uh, return to the linear uh, cases. Not that any linear problem belong to the uh, zero level set. So if we, get the solution, it, we have to lie in the zero set. We, this, this simply simple uh, consequences. Indeed, <clears throat> consider again this system. In the above question, I ask how to explain we, how we get this, uh, this relay quotient. And can be, this can be explained as following. Consider the energy function. We have to consider energy function for this equation. Hence, to find the set of eigenpair of this uh, equation, it is sufficient to find the set of critical value corresponding to the zero critical level set. And thus, to find a set of critical value 
of the relay equation. We, we have to study the relay equation. So this is idea why we come, when we study the linear, uh, probably why we come to study this uh, relay equation. This is not simply multiplication and summarization and dividing one of the another. So let me also uh, note the following, that relay equation in linear problem, it is homogeneous in the following sense. If we multiply by t, then we, this function does not change. So in nonlinear case, it's also we need something like this uh, uh, property. So I shortly this explain. Let's we uh, have one parameter transformation group. Assume that there exists some domain and C C1 functional this T. So that for any U we have this uh, uh, property, this functional, uh, we have this functional, uh, this functional uh, map V to V. And this derivative at this point is equal to zero. Then we introduce the this we can introduce this function. We take the relay quotient and put here this function. So this function I call nonlinear generalized relay quotient. So what is the main important the main property? This nonlinear generalized. Uh, functional relay quotient is homogeneous function with respect the, to the transformation here. So this is uh, definition this uh, that uh, have the same similar property like in the linear theory, but it's not because I uh, because we want to obtain something similar to the linear. Let me show how it's work. I, I, I prepared two examples. One example is concerned with the Nihari manifold method. Let me shortly explain uh, how it's built. So we deny this and consider this is this set is called Nihari manifold, but we see this is this is actually a, a zero level set of this function phi prime lambda. And <clears throat> not that for any uh, if if functional, if this uh, is uh, critical points of this function, then you belong to the, this uh, set. And a local mini minimum or maximum point of the function subject to the Nihari manifold is called extremal points on the Nihari manifold. But of course, it's not necessary that extremal points is solution of our problem. So uh, here the, the following dilemma, if Assume that this is extremal points of the, our function on the Nihari manifold, and suppose that this condition is satisfied. Then this these points will, will, will be critical points of our function. The proof is due to the Lagrange multiplier rule. If we have uh, critical points, this is constrained critical points, so we have this. By Lagrange multiplier rule, we have this equality for some mu, this Lagrange multiplier, testing this equation by u, and taking in, into account that we have this condition because we lie in the Nihari manifold, we obtain this. But we have this condition, and so mu is uh, equal to zero. If mu is equal to zero, we get this equal to zero. So what is uh, here? This is important to have this condition to apply the Nihari manifold. I call this this condition the applicable. This is uh, we call this lambda the ap ap applicable value of the Nihari manifold method if this condition is satisfied. So there is a question: for which lambda, when we study equation, for which lambda this condition is satisfied? So in this case, uh, the problem arises uh, to find the limit points of the set lambda where the applicability condition of Nihari manifold is satisfied. And these points we call extra value of the applicability of the Nihari manifold method. What is the Nihari? Now I return to the relay quotient. Relay quotient give, uh, give possibility to find this value. So, if we again consider this, now we see a relay quotient different. Here is differentiation of uh, this function 
uh, testing to the U and divided by this. So this function can have several, if we consider that this is called the fiber function, has countable set of the points T1, T2, so that this map are well defined, so that we can introduce these several uh, relay quotient for every, every, every root of this uh, equation. In this case, uh, there is uh, some conjecture that the set of extremal value, all extremal value of the Nihari manifold method can be defined by the means of the set of critical value of the Nihari manifold of this. So this is in a certain sense nonlinear stepper. So if we find this, then we have some interval and every interval we can apply Nihari manifold and obtain solution. So, 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 so let's me explain how it's built. So let's consider this equation. You see, this is uh, this is equation is uh, in variational form. We can try to solve this uh, equation by Nihari manifold method. Uh, but the function of, of uh, fiber function here, this is uh, fiber function, we put S here, multiplied by, by, by S, it's behaving like this. So it, what, is the, what is the difficulty of this? This is here two critical points, and sometimes these critical uh, points, fiber critical points, can be meet each other, and then in this case, the second derivative of this function would be equal zero. So not necessary that for any lambda this is work. So we consider in this case is relay quotient. Relay quotient is very simple in this case because um, moreover this is relay quotient has only one critical points, and we can find these critical points and obtain here. This is precisely formula. We obtain the nonlinear generalized relay quotient. So <clears throat> um, this, if we find infimum of this nonlinear relay quotient, then we obtain uh, the external value of the Nihari manifold. And we can prove this something like this theorem. Uh, in this interval, we can obtain two distant solutions. So why I tell uh, told about this, because now, <clears throat> I want to explain some, uh, to, 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 to give some example where we cannot uh, work without this method. So <clears throat> let me first of all note that when we work with this function, relay quotient, they made the singularity of the, our problem less for one point. So if we one time apply the relay quotient, we obtain, we have two critical points, we obtain only one critical point. If we have three critical points, we will have two critical points, and so on. We can repeat this construction several times. And then the, the next, uh, the next uh, equation, next, next uh, uh, example is the following. Look at this problem. So this is some, some assumption, uh, this is, uh, so that the assumption is the so that that we have three critical points. Our our function, this M of the function, has three critical points. So difficulty is when these critical points meet this or this meet this or maybe all of them is coincide. In these cases, the second derivative will be equal zero, and the Hari manifold we cannot apply. <coughs> So the question is the following, does the equation may have three distant solutions that would correspond to the, these different uh, critical points of the uh, fiber function? And the next question, could the branch of solution form the S-shaped type of bifurcation? So this is, uh, this is called S-shaped type bifurcation. And uh, which exceeded the dual cast catastrophe. So what is the means of dual cast? Usual cast uh, catastrophe is the following. If we have like this bifurcation curve, this has to be stable, this curve is stable, this is unstable. Dual cast catastrophe, this is opposite cases. This branch is unstable, this branch is unstable, and this is branch is stable. So, you see, this is uh, correspond with uh, this picture. Here is the local minimum. Here, 
uh, will be not the local minimum. So <clears throat> this is uh, the picture of the cards catastrophe. Uh, you see, this is we have to study actually with respect to parameters uh, because uh, for one, sometimes is as uh, shape bifurcation is disappear for some parameters. So this is a type of uh, equation studied a lot of uh, in the, in the, from the beginning, maybe 1971 by the work of the Cohn, Crandall, Rabinovitz, Amman, and uh, this is a list of some some main the main the work in this uh, in this direction. Let me <coughs> explain what the difference. Is. Uh, most of the result on the existence of S shape bifurcation deal with the nonlinearity when F u is positive from uh, in the in the in, in the this interval, and the function have to be two times differentiable. In these cases, we have the function is non lipschitz actually uh, at the point with zero. Moreover, this is negative on some interval every time. So this is such a new problem for the S type uh, bifurcation, and what? Let me explain here. Of course, uh, very easy to get here a positive mountain pass type solution. So positive mountain pass type, uh, pass type solution will be this or this, this or this. So if we consider this picture, mountain pass solution may be like this. Uh, maybe also this we don't know so what is the i want to explain why it's not good to work with the mountain pass type uh, solution because we don't know precisely in which solution we stay so it's difficult to separate the second question if we apply for instance super sub solution method uh, that is usually applied for, to obtain s uh, type solution uh, this is also difficult because this is unstable to to unstable one stable so um, uh, next, uh, I note that here this uh, picture here is difficult to obtain as as a bifurcation from the zero because this is never come to the zero. So I have no time. So we can apply here really equation and to get a solution uh, this uh, to prove the existence of this like type this type of solution. I shortly only stop. You, about the following, you see the picture is very interesting here. Up there, ah, same image or oh, at So let's me uh, let's me return. No, I will. I I want to speak a little bit in the finish. So look, we are paying here by the using Mihari manifold method, but really question method. All of this. Numbers are paying like a critical value of the uh, of the of the relay quotient corresponding, and then uh, in this in the bold line, this is line where we can construct our solution. You see, this is very interesting thing to appear. We see that mountain pass solution is jumping in this place. Usually, we think that mountain pass solution, if we study with respect the lambda. It has to be continuous, but this is jump. Moreover, this is jump from the one one solution to another solution. So this is uh, something also interesting from the, this is the investigation. The open question: there is some open question. The third solution obtained by the mountain pass solution, but in my opinion, it has to be obtained by the Nihari manifold method. So let me a little bit uh, say about the next example. So consider nonlinear Schrodinger equation like this. This equation have conservative flow, this energy conservative flow, and the mass conservative flow. This is usual uh, standard of uh, very known the facts. So the action of this function is like this. And if we consider the so-called standard wave, we obtain this equation. Here, lambda is frequency of the standard wave. So the solution of this equation is a variational form with the, this function. And we say that ground states, the solution is ground set if this satisfies. 
So this is minimum, give the medium over the all solution. The question is the following. If we obtain ground state, the question is if it's orbital stable. So let's me see, I mean, I, I didn't give here the definition, but this is standard definition. So the idea to obtain, uh, to prove this is, uh, is the using the weapon of function determined by this actual function restricted to the, uh, this is integral of the mass integral. Why is this? Because all of them is conservative law. This is first was proposed by, by Benjamin in 1972, and then by Zakharov and Kuznetsov 74. It seems to me this is independently they obtained this. And mathematically, this proof has been obtained by Kazimov Leons. Let me explain. The Kazimov Leons consider this, and consider this problem is called non prescribed problem. So we minimize this over the this condition. Both of them, the conservative law, you have to remember. So if we <clears throat> obtain solution this, then by the Lagrange multiplier rule, we obtain some solution of uh, nonlinear Schrodinger equation. But what is the bad here? Bad here that this Lagrange multiplier is unknown. This is first. And the second, we don't know if this we get the ground state solution by this method. And a lot of papers and works is uh, concerned with these two problems, how to prove this. In some cases, this is possible to get the non-prescribed solution and then obtain that this ground state. But if we use this, this is very easy to prove that this is orbital stable because both of them is conservative law. The question is how to obtain the ground state without non-prescribed solution. So idea is to relay, uh, relay equation. So we don't put here this, that QU is equal uh, constant. So we simply work directly with this. But now we put here the action level prescribed solution. So any solution we have uh, some prescribed action. So, <clears throat> and, uh, <clears throat> So this is called the prescribed action solution. If we get solution and uh, action is uh, given to the S, but lambda now is unknown in this approach. And uh, this is uh, the idea is welcome. So instead of ground state, we consider fundamental frequency solution. Now we minimize this, but it is interesting. We can prove after uh, obtaining this solution that this is also ground state. And uh, some uh, method, some we, we get with uh, Remy Carlos. This uh, we study this equation, and this is method is work. So uh, this is a statement of the problem that we obtain together. So you see, this is some parameter that we need to, to obtain by the applying the relay equation. In my opinion, this is uh, important application also nonlinear generalized uh, relay equation. So. In this step, I stop. This is some list of papers. And thank you very much for your attention. OK, please, questions or comments? Mm -hmm. OK. okay. Looks like some applications of the Morse theory about so uh, the the uh, critical level have their indices and their nice formalism uh, uh, developed in the Morse theory. Yes, it's uh, it's not like the development of the Morse theory, but Morse theory when we take into account the dependence from parameter. Elements. In my opinion, all this theory can be developed. It, it must be developed. But in the new points of view, when we have to take into account dependence from parameter lambda, this is at least some completely new problems. Uh, well, more question. Okay. 
Will you think work for the uh, operator of variable order? Variable orders? I think it might be interesting to try it on something. Variable, variable orders. Maybe I, I don't know. I didn't think. I, I suppose that it can be sometimes generalized when you have no precise. Uh, this is this is precise uh, variable. Yes, maybe I don't know. I didn't think. Okay. If uh, no more questions, please. Yes, Mr. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I 